you. Uh, this passage was not easy. This passage uh, troubled me. Troubled me. And then I was not so much confident to interpret properly. But uh, but I'm not defeated. I must st struggle. I must uh, do my best to un understand uh, many hidden meanings. So the title I may impart eternal life with your beloved children by holy hug. Okay, holy hug through. Holy hug, giving holy hug, we can impart eternal life uh, with our beloved children. So it could be misinterpreted. If, if it is applied to a grown up man to man, juvenile season man to man, uh, it might create trouble. Okay, application, we must be careful. The in application properly. Uh, this kind of holy hugging, holy kiss, if it is misinterpreted, uh, it might create uh, adulterous atmosphere because some pastors uh, made a big mistake by applying to this, this method of healing this method of impartation uh, improperly. That's why um, this passage is very much important. We must approach, you must approach, understand it properly, carefully, sensibly, uh, must be guided by the Holy Spirit. So let God guide us to reach to right understanding and right application. So, and he went up and lay upon the child. Why? The dead boy lie down, lay upon, lay upon the dead body. What's the meaning of this? Okay? The Holy Spirit gave me insight. It's the opposite action of hugging. Huh? Hugging from the upper part. It's in a standing position, giving hugs because chest to chest, okay? Chest to chest, touch contact. Uh, it could be understood as hugging because, in, according to Hebrew tradition, there is a holy kiss tradition of holy kiss. In Middle East, among the Arabians, the Jewish people, even holy kiss is more than uh, expression of love, everyday greeting, and then blessing, giving blessing, everyday bliss, uh, greeting. Uh, for if it is applied for father to daughter, father to son, is an action of blessing. So if it is the applied improperly or we might create many troubles because according to Korean tradition giving kiss is done secretly only we do not know children does not know when my father and mother exchange kiss because according to our tradition it should be done secretly <laughs> during the night only so we do not know that's not our culture so one pastor up tried to attempted to apply in public, criticized, accused, condemned. And the one more thing, uh, put his mouth to mouth, okay, mouth to mouth, giving kiss. Was it necessary? Mouth to mouth, okay, eyes to eyes, hands hands to hands. Is it necessary? If it is necessary, what could be the significant? What could be the spiritual nuance? 
For what? Touch your eyes upon the eyes of boy, okay? Touch your mouth, in other words, mouth to mouth means giving kiss. What could be the spiritual meaning? Hand to hands, what could be the spiritual meaning? And he stretched himself upon the child. Stretched himself upon the child. As a giving holy hugging. And the flesh of the child waxed warm. So the body of the child uh, became warm and alive again. Okay, next page. Okay, let us read together. Ready, go. The life of the divine spirit which was in Elisha was miraculously imparted by contact to the lifeless body. Be stretched himself or prostrated himself expresses closer contact with the body. Warmth may be communicated from the living body to the dead one. Elisha's holy action caused the child return to life. Put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hand and stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. By these actions of the prophet, the life of the Lord infused into the parts of the body. Elijah did the same to the widow's son at Zarephath, and Paul did the same impartation for the dead boy, Eutychus, as he shared the word of the Lord. Okay, so now, what is our development in understanding? No, you know, the dead body, as you touch the dead body, it's icy, you feel icy cold. It's not, it's not feeling fine, it's not feeling good. Icy cold. Mm. Uh, by instinct, withdraw your hand touch. It's, it's very cold. And then imagine. You hug, you give you 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 must give hugging. If you if your chest pop contact to the dead body, then you feel icy cold. Huh? It is different from the hugging. Beloved one, husband and wife, you may enjoy the loving feeling, but the icy cold. It's not so good. But the change our understanding. Now I'm going to impart. I'm going to share my energy, holy energy, energy of life for the dead one. So clearly speaking, I'm sure there should be a spiritual nuance, a holy touch, holy hugging. And then this method started by Elijah. Okay, called Elijah. And then Elijah, his best disciple, also mimicked. The, originally, this section was done by the Elisha. And then he did as his uh, teacher, Elijah. So Elijah used this method. Elisha used this method, including New Testament, Apostle Paul. When Eutychus, uh, sitting over the window, as the preaching of the Apostle Paul is becoming longer, he became sleepy and then fell down. Two story high to the ground, and his body smashed, or his the brain part smashed. So he was killed. His breathing stopped. And then, 
Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul used the same method of Elijah, same method of Elijah. So we may make a conclusion. This kind of special holy hug, mysterious holy hugging, holy touch was a uh, uh, was handed down, have been handing down since Elijah down to Apostle Paul. Okay? And that's the historical background. Hebrew people, uh, they kept this kind of tradition. And then according to the commandment of the Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ sent his 12 disciples or 70 disciples, Jesus said, heal the disease, cast out demon, raise the dead. Raise the dead. Okay? That kind of tradition commanded even by Jesus Christ. But problem today, many educated pastors, many sophisticated pastors, many westernized pastors, they never attempt to do this. They would not believe that. Many, many educated pastors, they would not believe in the historicity of Jesus. They would not believe in the miracle. In other words, many church pastors, they were Sadducees. Who are, who are Sadducees? They don't believe in miracles. They don't believe in angels. Huh? They would not experience anointing the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they became a Sadducee. They oriented all the Bible, biblical understanding the Sadducees, descendant of Sadducees. That's why whenever I'm preaching in this way, many of them uh, began to suspect. Because I am really, so my preaching is based on Apostolic tradition based on Old Testament great prophet tradition. But many educated Christian pastors, they would not believe in, they would not practice it because they were influenced by Greek philosophy. If the church leaders oriented, way of thinking is oriented by the Greek philosophy. They don't believe in miracles. Clearly, I'm proclaiming again on the standpoint of viewpoint of Old Testament tradition, even apostolic tradition. Jesus Christ did in this way. Apostle Paul did in this way. So, uh, accept it, okay, as it is written. And then we must try. What's, what could be the spiritual reason? Okay, next one. Next page. Elijah knew. Okay, let us read together. Ready go. Elijah knew the acts of Elijah at Serapont and followed the example. Elijah supplied the drought of Israel by rain from heaven. Elisha supplied the drought of the three kings by waters gushing out of the earth. Elijah increased the oil of the Serapatan. Elisha increased the oil of the prophet's widow. Elijah raised from the death of the Serapatan son. Elisha, the Shunammites, both of them had one mental, one spirit. Okay, both of them had one mental, one spirit. I might say in this way, both of them uh, used to wear one clothing gown, one clothing gown, and one spirit. They put on one spirit, one same power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, next one. Let us read together. Ready, go. And Elijah stretched himself upon the child 
three times and they cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again, up to there. It is more than hugging, it is more than as lying over the dead body. He prayed together, O Lord my God, I pray thee, okay, how many times? Three times. Three times means more than enough, okay, continue, more than enough. Three times, why three times? Why not four times? Because by offering three times prayer, he got answered from his prayer, okay, that's why. So, three times repeated prayer was enough, was enough for the man of God. God was willing to give answer prayer. He stretched himself upon the child. He stretched himself upon the child. If they were standing, it's a giving hugging, hugging each other. Is it the natural means of reviving the dead or mysterious holy action? What is the answer? Is it this kind of stretching himself upon the child, covering your body, covering the dead body over your arms? Is it natural means of reviving the dead? Is natural means of is a natural means of uh, reviving the dead? It's a natural means of impartation, like a giving massage. Huh? Is it one of the natural method, like giving massage over the dead one, or mysterious holy action? Should be mysterious. It is mysterious until we understand. It is mysterious until we apply it. It is mysterious until we experience giving the dead a life. It's a holy impartation. Man of God, man of God creator, man of God Elohim, servant of God Elohim can do that as God created. Our Savior was resurrected from the dead. If, if we are filled with the Spirit of Jesus Christ who are resurrected, so we can make the dead one be resurrected. Okay, point is, is this. I must do as my Savior Jesus used to do. Jesus promised, clearly promised in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, 13. The believer, those who believe in me, will do as I used to do. Now we are challenged, we are challenged to do as Jesus used to do for the dead one. Okay, oh, what is another, another mysterious thing is uh, the man of God, Elijah or Elijah did not rebuke, did not rebuke the mother of child. Did not uh, scold them because you are sinful, because you have the, the neglected the daily devotional life. There is no mention about that because you are wrong thinking. Right? He, a man of God, prophet, did not scold the, the mother of the child because your sinfulness, your, your child is suffering. This kind of miserable thing. There's no mention about that. Without scolding, without rebuking, without making them repent from their simple life, he just prayed. So we might, we, we might interpret in this way. This kind of miserable thing, this kind of disease, was not done by the hands of God. Most probably it does happen by the hands of Satan, demon. Because you know, the child, the two women, Serapat woman, hmm, the two women was very much devoted. They were number one mission supporter. Okay? Why God should kill them? Why they sh should kill the miserable thing? Why? The child, the beloved one, 
most active, most supportive church ministry must suffer this kind of tragedy. Was it happened? Was it happened by the manipulation of God, our Father? No way! So, when you encounter this kind of troubles, your interpretation is important. From time to time, I hear bad news. Oh, Pastor Ran, blah blah, church member, eh? suddenly fall into sickness, suddenly fall into extraordinary fever, so fall into extraordinary headache. Then I, I, I began to analyze. Oh, she has been very much faithful. She has been very much supportive in my ministry. She is the one who made exemplary Christian life. Then immediately I made this the conclusion. Ah, the Satan, demon, they try to destroy the kingdom of God. Then I began to have aggressive attitude. You demon, you demon, you Satan. You dare attempt to kill devoted church member, beloved one of God. I begin to have, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to punch against the, the attack of demon. Okay? Having this kind of attitude is very much important. The moment, from the moment you say, oh, this is the will of God. God is sovereign. Everything God does is right. If it is the will of you, God, then I'm willing to accept it. From the moment you think in that way, you don't understand. Tradition of Elijah, tradition of Elijah, tradition of Jesus, tradition of Apostle Paul practiced also. So interpretation is, is key point. So, we church leaders must learn how to interpret Bible passage, how to interpret what is happening on today. Depends on your interpretation, you can, you can do the right ministry of Jesus or not. That's why biblical human, human ethics is very much important. Biblical human ethics is very much important, how to understand, how to interpret. Okay, the middle part, the action, ready to go. The action clearly caused mysterious healing virtue by the prophets. These are the cases of imparting the healing power, resurrection, by the holy hearts with prayer. The Lord hears the voice of holy prophet. Now imagine, demon is trying to destroy the kingdom of God. Demon always trying to make your ministry destroy subtly because attacking beloved child, a beloved church member. Oh, that member was so much devoted. And then that church member uh, suffered this kind of mishap, this kind of tragedy. Oh, Christian God is very bad in that way. Because of the, because of this kind of bad rumor, destroy church ministry. That's what demon is wanted. This what this this what Satan is preparing. That's why we must understand the the, the word of the Lord properly. These are the cases of imparting the healing power. Healing power or power resurrection by holy hug with prayer. Holy hug with prayer. Okay, this is the point. Giving, exchanging holy hug with prayer. Whenever you are practicing holy hug, okay, there should be 
blessing of the Holy Spirit be with you. There should be holy impartation must be happen. Amen. The Lord hears the voice of Holy Prophet. The Lord hears the voice of Holy Prophet. God listens to our prayer, but God is willing to listen to the prayer of Holy Prophet, Holy Servant of the Lord. Amen? Next one. Okay, read together. Importance of hugging your child every day. Read together. Ready, go. We need four hugs a day for survival. We need eight hugs a day for maintenance. We need 12 hugs a day for growth. Our family therapist, Virginia Steele. The benefit of hugging are boundless for child cognitive and emotional development. Oh, still we don't understand. We need four hugs a day, the baby, okay? Christian children. Christian children, Christian baby, need the four times a hug a day. As they are younger, more times is necessary. Eight times hugging a day for maintenance. We need 12 hugs a day for growth. What's the meaning of this? You must become a mother. Hmm? You must grow your, your own child. What's the meaning of this? I wish you to be a good Christian mother. Whatever you believe in, whatever you learn, must apply to your daily life, to your family life. The benefit of hugging boundless to a child's cognitive and emotional development. One more time. Ready, go. The benefit of hugging a boundless to a child's cognitive and emotional development. Cognitive. Understanding, new information, cognitive, emotional development, both cognitive, both understanding and emotional development. Continue. There are 10 amazing benefits of hugging every day. It helps them feel safe. Children need the loving gestures of their parents to feel emotionally secure, emotionally secure. The touch of a hug helps to establish trust and sense of safety in them. It allows a deep sense of security. <clears throat> uh, my aunt was an ordained woman pastor. And then he opened orphanage. And then he developed orphanage program. Uh, he, one day, she made decision to accept even infant, even very young one, newborn babies also. Wind often it, the raising of wind often it is easier, but you know, infantry, newborn baby, taking care of newborn baby is need a special care. And then one day I heard, as, as my, uh, the, Aunt received a newborn baby. She followed all the directions, how to take care, how to, how to nurse, how to feed infantry children. But a problem, she began to suffer a problem. Many children are always sick, become sick. Continually, they suffer diarrhea. So it was very hard for her because she followed all the directions, medical care direction, just followed all the medical science. But still, many children still suffering sickness, weakness. She prayed and prayed and prayed when the Holy Spirit instructed her, let them die. I, no, 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 sorry. Let them sleep. Let them sleep yeah. uh, in this fossa, not, not lying upon the, the face upon the sky, but fall down. And then uh, 
floor heating is a Korea. The, the floor is heated. So let you born babies sleep in the position of lying down. Stretch out over the floor. And then amazingly, they're becoming healthier and healthier. No, the bowel loss, more diarrhea. So, uh, physically speaking, as child, as young 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 babies frustrated in the in the position of frustration and they're sleeping, uh, they they receive the hugging effect. They they're supposed to be protected. They're supposed to be imparted the warmth of the mother's breast, but uh, the babies cannot cannot be benefited warmth the mother's breath instead the warmth mother's breast uh, they enjoy warm temperature of the Korean eh? Korean the heating system that's why that kind of method spread to the neighboring uh, orphanage so it became a it became a secret of the health. So I understand. Ah. Now, I understand once again. Okay? Now look at the second photo. The she's supposed to enjoy motherly hugging, okay? But the mother was not there, okay? Because she was abandoned by mother. She became an orphan. Instead of the mother's bosom, she must be satisfied with the hugging of teddy bear. Teddy bear. Huh? That's the wisdom of God. Teddy bear is a nice, wonderful substitute for lacking loving feeling. Okay, in the, in the middle part, there are 10 amazing, ready, you go. There are 10 amazing benefits of hugging every day. It helps them feel safe. Children need the loving of gestures of their parents to feel emotionally secure. The touch of a hug helps to establish trust and sense of safety in them. It allows a deep sense of security. One day, your photograph made me surprised. You made a lot of teddy bear, a lot of dolls. You grew up hmm, in the midst of many dolls. And then I was surprised when I saw the, the video shot of your younger sister in Australia. She showed me a lot of dolls. <laughs> she also grew, grew up in the midst of dolls. That, that's better, okay? That's better than nothing, okay? What is lacking from the natural mother? What is lacking from a real human hugging? But this kind of teddy bear hugging also could be the good substitute. Next one. Oh, it's not moving. It's not moving. Okay, I must read. Huh? F2? Ah, 저, 저기 갖다 줘야 돼요. 뭐지? 저기 마우스. Okay, let's read together. Ready, go. It makes them smarter. Researchers at the Washington University School of Medicine found that children who are sh showered with love by their mothers during the early years have a large hippocampus, the key part of the brain that is vital for learning, memory, and respond to stress. What's the meaning of this? Children who are showered with love by the mothers 
during the early years have a larger hippocampus. Hippocampus. It means the key part, name a key part of the brain that is the vital for learning, memory, and respond to stress. Okay, physically speaking, we give physical hugging only. Okay, bodily hugging only, but it is effective to the brain, development of the brain. The part, name of part is hippocampus, hippocampus inside the brain. It is the key part of the brain that is vital for learning, memory, and response to stress. Okay, let us read together. Children, there you go. Children will continue to reap the benefit of your loving affection as they grow up into the confident and well-adjusted individual. Three, is a natural stress burster. Physical contact such as hugging releases a chemical in our brain called oxytocin. Oxytocin, which is the love hormone. Oxytocin is the known to reduce depression and anxiety. Thus, cuddling and hugging your child helps to melt the stress always and put them and you in a better mood. This is the reason. According to medicinal science, remember oxytocin, okay? Oxytocin. Hugging create oxytocin in your brain. And oxytocin reduces depression and anxiety. So, medically, it is really necessary. It's a hidden uh, science. Scientifically, it's benef beneficial. The next one. Read together, Diego. It promotes healthy and self-esteem. The hug develops a sense of self-confidence and the positive mindset in them. This self-worth stay with them from the childhood right up to the adulthood. We can boost their confidence with a simple hug. Okay, this, this kind of effect, scientific effect, started from the childhood but it developed the self-worth stay with them from childhood right up to adulthood. From childhood up to adulthood, we can boost their confidence with a simple hug. Uh, intentionally, okay, intention. By having this kind of knowledge, we must give them more hugging. Five, ready, go. It helps in discipline. When they misbehave, we often scold them only. However, giving them a hug again with a firm explanation of what they did wrong helps giving discipline. Children are more willing to listen to what we have to say when they feel good. So do encourage them with a hug to reassure them of your love. Or you might scold your baby or your children whenever they misbehave. But don't forget, in the process of scolding, in the process of disciplining them, finally, you must end up your discipline, scolding by giving hugging. So let them, let them understand. Oh, still, my mother loves me. Still, my father loves me. Okay? Discipline is necessary, but we must wrap up. Wrap up. Huh? In this way. Next one, six, together, ready, go. Hugging allows you and your child to exchange energy. Hugging teaches your child the value of empathy. Hugging is a powerful lesson itself to show your children what it means to love. Seven, medical case studies have proven that hugging boosts our immunity. Oh, 
immunity, boost our immunity. It's better than booster. Hugging stimulate the thymus gland, thymus gland, which regulate the body production of white blood cell, improving the immune function and keep you healthy. Oh, Do, can you believe that? By giving hug, you can boost their immunity. See, teddy bear, shouldering teddy bear. Okay, next one. Hey, together, ready to go? It keeps both of you happy. Gathering your child in your arm for a hug helps to uplift both your spirit and keeps your body happy. Hugging is also a great remedy for us as parents to eliminate the frustration by letting them know that our love for them remains unchanged. Spread the love and fill your children's day, children's day with hugs and cuddles. Okay, now finally, in what sense? Your eyes must touch to the eye of child. Your mouth must touch to the mouth of your, of your child. You must say. Your hands also cover and touch the hands of the baby while you are hugging, while you are praying for them. Symbolically, this is the meaning. Let your child let your child speak as the prophet speak. In other words, let your child speak as Jesus speaks by giving kiss to the mouth. Yeah. Touching eyes to eyes. Let your child see as the prophet sees. The prophets who are the who are the who are the open eyes? Open my eyes, Lord. I want to see, okay? Godly vision. So let your child have open eyes to see the Godly vision. Our hand in hand. Let your child do action. With hand, you do action. Let your child. Let your child do action as the prophet do, as the prophet do, okay? In other words, you pray and bless, Lord, let my child behave as Jesus behaves. Huh? Let my child bless the eyes, see what Jesus sees. Let my child speak as Jesus speaks. Amen? That's the prayer. That prayer opened the heavenly gate. That prayer draw the attention of God. And then, even though unwantedly, Satan attacked your child, but he's going to experience power of resurrection, power of miraculous healing. In that way, your children will become sure witness of God, sure witness of God's power, sure witness of the healing power of Jesus. In that way, your children will become one of the holy seed, holy seed as is promised in the Genesis chapter 3.15. Genesis 3.15, Holy Seed will crush the head of Satan. Uh -huh. So, Okay, let us practice. Two by two, ladies, ladies, hugging each other for a moment and pray and bless each other. Touch eyes and bless. Man to man. Man to man, woman to woman, okay? One minute, one minute, let us pray.
Lord bless his brother's eye to see as Jesus sees. Amen. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands in your prayer. Oh Lord, thank you so much. Hallelujah. We love you. We trust in you. We thank